Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to Gran Turismo 7's 1.46 update. Today we are discussing the brand new cars that were added, the couple of engine swaps, the new events, the new menu book, and let us lower our expectations because this is not an update that had many, many, many new things like new tracks or anything of that kind of nature. Let's be real, it's just three cars and that's why we're coming back this month. So with this update versus a just another three cars that should have been here at launch, we have a major announcement actually, and that is the Skoda team has been working tirelessly since 2019 to revise the old 1957 1100 race car and bring a more modernized design, which they have come up with this, the Skoda Vision Gran Turismo. And like I was saying, it is in a way very reminiscent of the early 1957 1100 race car that was bound for the 24-hour Le Mans, never made it by the sounds of it. And this car is looking towards the future versus just revisiting the past, if you will. Because this car, as in the very long description that we can read through in the car collection side of the garage, is very reminiscent of our modern Formula E cars. And by the sounds of it, too, you can tell that it is well is being powered by an electric engine and the more than the more that I drive these electric engine cars in Gran Turismo the more I'm kind of okay with them I'm still getting into, used to the fact that we don't have a transmission that it's just we're in drive so it's basically an automatic engine but the results are an astounding level of torque an astounding amount of acceleration that gets you way faster than you'd think that you'd get to sooner than you're expecting. And what's even weirder is normally when it comes to Gran Turismo adding cars, they always have to add events that you can use said new cars in. So this car is the poster, the literal poster child of a new Vision Gran Turismo event for the Grand National Highway. And upon entering, you can't even use the car. <laughs> you have to either go to GT Auto to get ballasts and power restrictors, or you're doing what I'm doing, where you actually have to change out the tires because its standard power point limit is 853, and the event is at 850. Oops. So if we just move that aside, at the end of the day, it's it's a fun car, I will admit. This is a really neat looking fighter jet-like car. Again, Formula E looking thing. And as all Vision Gran Turismo cars go, what is this interior? This is so cool. <laughs> I mean, you have this screen of a dashboard that is just your rear view mirror. Oh. And there's no other information apart from your speedometer. And I guess your throttle and your braking input? That's kind of unique. Huh. And just the weirdest thing, too, about all this is because a lot of the other Vision Gran Turismos are also, like, hybrid or electric-based. I mean, just listen. We're in a race. And it's a leisurely Sunday drive by the sounds of it. We have like zero noise pollution. <laughs> so I'm up here racing against this other uh, Skoda Vision Gran Turismo car. And it's given me this feeling, you know, since these cars look very kind of close to a standard Formula E race car, that all we have to do is just change out the liveries to what is in Formula E. And that's how we start running those Formula E races in Gran Turismo. Tell me that wouldn't be cool. Because that would be cool. 
One of the other new events that we have is the Japanese Clubman Cup 550 on Alsace Village Reverse, primarily for the brand new Afila, which is a more or less a collaboration between Sony and Honda to create kind of this mobility car. And of course, again, once again, it is an electric vehicle. And the big head headline news for this one is that you can go to the Brand Central and you can just pick it up. No money, no transaction. It's free. So go ahead, make sure that you add this to your account. And I am hoping that down the line we can do some engine swaps or something because that would be kind of fun with this thing. So it's kind of interesting being in a Japanese car on this course, considering the fact that the other Japanese cars around us are, you know, Toyota AE86, uh, Mitsubishi Evo 9, up there is the Nissan 370Z. And then we've got our electric little mobility car. And it's performing quite well, actually. I don't mind, like, it is, because it is an electric car, and it's not meant to go, like, it's not a supercar. So, I mean, you can feel the, the weight of the vehicle. But, I mean, we're just kind of passing everybody like it's no big deal. So, again, another unexpected car that is kind of just nice to have. So the nice thing with Polyphony Digital is if you do not like the Vision Gran Turismo cars or electric cars or really anything after the year 1980, they've got you covered because they added the 1970 Chevrolet Chevelle SS 454. And for ultimate realism, I have booted up my wheelbase's maximum torque to about 8 Newton meters. And... I'm enjoying rolling through the gears, even though I don't have a manual shifter next to me. It's always fun to just feel a little bit more involved than the electric cars where you just feel like you can drive them with a single finger and kind of call it a day. I mean, listen to this noise with all these other American muscle cars that were going by. Oh, lovely, lovely noise coming out of these collective exhaust pipes. Got a little bit of oversteer coming there. We were able to correct that. So again, not too bad of an update. We've got some partnerships that have been years in the making with the Skoda Vision Gran Turismo concept and then the Afila, the partnership between Honda and Sony. But then, like I said, it's always nice to kind of go back to your roots and get a very, 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 very nice Chevelle SS in here. So as far as the cars go in this update, they're pretty neat. I, I, no complaints here. When it comes to new menu books being added for these updates, they've normally been pretty standard, nothing too exciting. The issue that people have noticed with this particular menu book, or the one that was added for just this update, is, I mean, it's the Ferrari 365 GTB4, then the Ferrari Testarossa, and then the La Ferrari. People are going, well, you can't just buy it from the brand central. You have to, like hope to God that you get the invite for the stupid thing. So... It's not ideal. I think everybody's in pretty big agreement that um, the invite system is completely broken when it comes to the Brand Central. So I'm just finding those that have been struggling to get a Ferrari invite for the last year or two still haven't gotten it and then found the extra menu book requires a Ferrari invite I imagine that they might just give up at this point and just be like well that's I'm done I'm done playing I don't I don't blame them because that invite system is massively massively a problem
As far as engine swaps go, five new engines. Um, mainly, it seems like that they're from existing Chevrolet cars. So one of them being is now with the Bugatti Veyron GT4, you can now use the LS7-BRZ. BRZ, you're thinking, isn't that a Subaru? It is. It's from the Subaru BRZ drift car that uses an LS7, which is... I'm trying to think about the dynamics of this, of the Veyron with the BRZ engine, but it's an LS. Anyway, interesting. Then we've got the Honda NSX GT4 now available with a similar LS7 engine from the Rampage Camaro. Uh, of course, there's a modern LT5 power for two classic Corvettes, both the C1 and C2 Stingray. And then finally, the Lexus LC500 also can use the LS7-BRZ. So like I was saying before, the April update is both unique in a way that we've gotten the new Skoda Vision Gran Turismo car and the Leaf mobility car from Sony and Honda. But at the same time too, it's exactly what we'd expect from one of our uh, normally monthly updates. It's interesting that this update finally brings us up over to exactly, actually, 500 cars now being in Gran Turismo 7, which is kind of a cool number to hit, finally. I mean, every single car in this game is detailed beyond comprehension. Speaking of which, I just noticed this. Can't believe I didn't notice this before. Look at the top of the screen. You can see all the different kind of assists that you have whether it be like the headlights and then the abs traction control and you've got uh the your hazard signals and all that kind of fun stuff all at the top of the car so if you play without any heads-up display whatsoever i i'm curious to see if this is also in vr as well for those who do uh play in vr but regardless not a bad update so that's all I have for this uh, video here. If you enjoy this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Next week, we have a very exciting video for at least m me. Uh, I've been hinting at this for a little bit now, and it is my experience joining a Gran Turismo 7 Racing League. So please stay tuned for that. It's, it's going to be a really fun one. I think you guys are going to enjoy that quite a bit. So again, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.